We're going to go through two examples of solving homogeneous systems of linear equations. We're going to solve these two systems, and we'll do it using Gaussian elimination. I'll leave a link in the description to my lessons introducing homogeneous linear systems and Gaussian elimination. These are homogeneous systems because you can see the constants on the right side in each case are all zero. So that's what makes it homogeneous. Let's begin with this system. As you'll see, these are two meaningfully different examples. You should immediately notice that in this system, we have the same number of equations as variables. We have three of each. So it may be the case that there are infinitely many solutions because it could be that two of these equations are equivalent in which case perhaps we have more variables than we have restrictions. So we could have infinitely many solutions. It's not possible that there are zero solutions because every homogeneous system is consistent because in a homogeneous system, the constants are all zero. So we could just plug in X equals zero, Y equals zero, and Z equals zero, and for sure have a solution. That's called, of course, the trivial solution. But we're gonna have to solve this guy using Gaussian elimination to figure out exactly what situation this is. What are the solutions? Gaussian elimination, of course, begins with a matrix used to represent the linear system. Usually, we would use an augmented matrix with the coefficients in the matrix, but then also we would have the constants in the matrix. But for a homogeneous system, you actually don't need to store the constants in the matrix because no matter what elementary row operations we perform, the constants are still going to be zero. So these homogeneous systems are really nice in that way that we only have to worry about the coefficients. And then we just have to perform row operations to get this into row echelon form. You could do Gauss-Jordan elimination and get it to reduced row echelon form, but I'm going to use Gaussian elimination. In the next example, we will use Gauss-Jordan elimination just for variety. I've written out all the steps here of Gaussian elimination, but let's just quickly walk through them. This first step is multiplying row 1 by 1 half in order to turn this leading entry into a 1. Now that we have a leading entry of a 1 in row 1, we can add multiples of row 1 to rows 2 and 3 to get zeros below this leading 1. So, since 1 will cancel out with that negative 1, we'll add row 1 to row 2. And if we subtract 1 from 1 in row 3, we'll get rid of that 1. So, we'll subtract row 1 from row 3. Doing that, and of course being careful with your sign and your fractions, you're going to get to this matrix here. If we were exactly following the algorithm prescribed by Gaussian elimination, at this step we would divide row 2 by 3 halves in order to turn this leading entry into a 1. But as a human, I can look at this and notice that now is a great time to subtract row 2 from row 3 to cleanly cancel out those 3 halves. So that's going to be our next step. Subtract row 2 from row 3, and that's going to get us here. Now we can divide row 2 by 3 halves, which is the same as multiplying it by 2 thirds, in order to turn this leading entry into a 1. And also, now to clean up row 3, all we have to do is multiply it by one-tenth. And that's going to get us here. We are now in row echelon form. At this point, we can use the row echelon form matrix to represent the system of equations. We have that 1x minus 1 half y minus 3 halves z equals 0. We have that 1y minus 3z equals 0. And we have that 1z equals 0. Then, using a process sometimes called back substitution, we can solve this system. We know that z must equal 0, so plugging that into the second equation, we would just get that y equals 0. Plugging z and y equals 0 into the first equation, those terms would cancel out, and we would have x equals 0. So, in fact, the only solution to this homogeneous system is the trivial solution. X equals Y equals Z equals zero. 
And again, in this example, there's no way we could have immediately known that there was only the trivial solution by just glancing at the system. Having the same number of equations as variables still leaves multiple possibilities open. There could be infinitely many solutions if two of the equations happen to be redundant, or we could have this situation where we have a trivial solution and none others. Let's move on to the second example where we will use Gauss-Jordan elimination. Here is our second example. We have two equations in this system and one, two, three, four variables. So you should immediately notice that in this case, we have more variables than equations. So it's a consequence of the free variable theorem for homogeneous linear systems, which I'll leave a link in the description for my video on that theorem. It's a consequence of that theorem that this system for sure is going to have infinitely many solutions. It has more equations than variables, so we're going to have some free variables, which means we're going to have infinitely many solutions. We already know that, but we can proceed with solving this system using Gauss-Jordan elimination in order to figure out exactly what those infinitely many solutions are going to look like. Here are the row operations necessary to turn the coefficient matrix into reduced row echelon form. Again, this is a homogeneous system, so we don't have to store the constants in the matrix because no row operations are going to change the constants. So let's just walk through these operations. We begin by multiplying row 1 by a third to change the leading entry to 1. That gets us here. Then, we subtract 5 copies of row 1 from row 2 in order to get a 0 below the leading 1. That gets us here. Obviously, you got to be careful with all these fractions running around. Then, we would multiply row 2 by negative 3 over 8 in order to turn its leading entry to a 1. And that gets us here. Now, the only thing we have to do for Gauss-Jordan elimination is make sure we have zeros above and below all leading 1s. We have a leading one here, so we're going to have to make this a zero. And in order to do that, we'll just subtract one-third row two from row one. So that is our last operation here. Subtract one-third row two from row one. Now we have zeros above and below all of the leading ones. This is now in reduced row echelon form. From here, we can pretty easily describe the infinite set of solutions. We have, from row 1, the x1 plus 0x2 plus a fourth x3 plus 0x4 equals 0. And from row 2, we get this equation with 0x1s, 1x2, and so on, equals 0. Now, we'll solve each of these equations for the leading variables, and that gets us here. We have that x1 equals negative a fourth x3, and we have that x2 equals negative a fourth x3 minus x4. Again, just solving for the leading variables. This means, then, that x1 and x2 are the only variables with restrictions. x3 and x4 are free to be whatever they please. Thus, letting x3 equal some parameter r and x4 be parameterized as s, we can describe the complete solution set like this. x1 must equal negative one-fourth r. x2 equals negative one-fourth r minus s x3 equals r, and x4 equals s. An infinite set of solutions. Pick any value you like for s and r. Those are our free variables, and you're going to get a solution to this linear system. So those are two examples of solving homogeneous systems. In one case, we just had a trivial solution, and in the other case, we had infinitely many solutions, and we were able to identify that would be the case just by looking at the system, because we had more variables than equations, which guarantees some free variables. I'll leave links in the description to relevant videos you might be interested in checking out after this one. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and also be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm a V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me to Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together, like any time that we intersect, cause my opponent.